All right, so now we're on to the real deal. We're going to be solving rational equations. So again, we're going to see rational expressions, but now we've got an equation, so we're going to be solving for x. We're going to start with just a basic one that you might have seen in algebra, just something with fractions. I really can't stand fractions, and so I, I like to get rid of fractions as soon as I can, just because they're complicated, and it doesn't need to be that complicated. So I deal with them if I can, but get rid of them if possible. So if we multiply through by the lowest common denominator, it'll kill the fraction in a sense. So the lowest common denominator of 4 and 6 would be 12, because 4 goes into 12 and 6 goes into 12. Um, and so if we multiply the left-hand side by 12 and multiply the right-hand side by 12, here's what happens. We get 12 times 1 fourth x on the left-hand side. So 12 times 1 fourth, 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 12 three times. And so on the left-hand side, you're left with just 3x. 3x over 1 if you want, but we killed the fraction, so it's gone. Um, now this 12 gets multiplied by both of these, so we get 5 times 12, which is 60. Didn't have a fraction to begin with, but then 1 sixth times 12. And so we get the 6 goes into itself once, and 6 goes into 12 twice. 1 times 2 is 2. 60 minus 2 is 58. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 58 thirds. So, we got a note to our, us up here to be aware of extraneous solutions. We'll actually get an extraneous solution um, in a later example. Um, but those are just when you get an extra answer that's wrong, an extra erroneous answer um, that comes as a problem of you can't divide by zero. So on to the next problem, little step up, but the same concept. We're going to multiply through by the lowest common denominator, and the thought is, well, 5 and x minus 4 don't have anything in common, so 5 times x minus 4 is going to be the lowest common denominator. So 5 times x minus 4 times the left, which is 2 over x minus 4. And you can already see the whole reason we're doing that is so that this x minus 4 will cancel out. So you'll just get 5 times 2. And on the other side, you get x plus 5 times x, sorry, x plus 5 over 5 times the lowest common denominator that was 5 times x minus 4. We're bleeding into that problem a little bit, but the 5's cancel out. That was the whole reason we did it, and so now you're left with x plus 5 times x minus 4. So notice, this right here is the result that you would get if you just cross multiplied. I don't like just saying let's cross multiply because people get cross multiplying and multiplying fractions confused. And so this is the whole reason cross-multiplying works. Multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator, and the denominators cancel out. So let's simplify this a little bit. Multiply this out. We get x squared. x times negative 4, negative 4x. And we get a 5x. So together, that makes plus 1x. And then 5 times negative 4 is a negative 20. So it's got an x squared and an x in it. That's a quadratic function. You can solve it um, by either factoring or by the quadratic formula. But both require that we set it equal to 0. So 0 equals x squared plus x minus 30. I like to factor if at all possible. So negative 30 is anything multiply to negative 30 and add to 1. So they've got to be different by 1, and so the 6 and 5 is the, the jackpot. We've got to make the 6 positive and the 5 negative, because 6 minus 5 is a positive 1, but they multiply to a negative 30. So we get x plus 6, x minus 5, and so x plus 6 equals 0. So x equals negative 6, or x minus 5 equals 0, or x equals 5. And there you have it. 
you want to just double check that neither of these answers make the denominator zero because that would make it undefined. That would give us an extraneous solution. So, on to the next problem. Just like we did when we were um, combining expressions, it's very handy to factor before you get started. Otherwise, you're going to make it much more complicated on yourself. So x times x plus 1 is this factored, because you can take an x out of both. And then you notice that the lowest common denominator is x times x plus 1. So that's what we're going to multiply through on the top, on the left and the right. So x times x plus 1 gets multiplied by the left-hand side. And I'm going to write that 3 over x squared plus x as an x times x plus 1, just in factored form. Plus 3 over x plus 1. That's the left-hand side. And negative 1 over x times x times x plus 1. That's the left-hand side, or the right-hand side. So, this x times x plus 1 gets distributed to both of these. You can imagine that this is the over 1 part. And notice the whole reason we did this was so that the x would cancel out with the x, and x plus 1 cancel out with the x plus 1. So, only thing that's left is that 3. The whole denominator canceled out, and actually the whole numerator over here. This x times x plus 1 also gets distributed to here. x plus 1's are going to cancel out, leaving 3 times that x that's out front. On the other side, x on top and bottom cancel out. You're left with negative 1 times x plus 1. So that's negative 1 times that. So you want to distribute that. Negative x minus 1. I'm going to add the x. You get 4x. I'm going to subtract the 3. You get negative 4. Divide by the 4 to get the x by itself, and x equals negative 1. Now, the only problem with negative 1 is that when you plug it into actually both of these denominators, 3 over negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 3 over 0, which is undefined. Because 3 over 0 is undefined, negative 1 can't actually be an answer. So this is no solution is the actual answer, is the lack of an answer. So, no answer at all to this problem because we got an extraneous solution. Um, and that's that problem. We've got two more examples coming.